we're really blessed. I mean, this piece of land, it's really well-drained soil. You know, you can read any book about growing stuff, and I mean, everything loves really well-drained soil. The problem with that is that a lot of things that like well-drained soil also like a lot of moisture, so there's kind of a paradox there. I knew going forward, and it became really painfully obvious the first couple of years we started farming, was with really well-drained soil, when you get a droughty period in August or something where it doesn't rain for a month, you really realize quickly that you need to irrigate. Almost everything we grow, we plan on irrigating. I mean, if you're gonna make the investment of planting something and cultivating it and fertilizing it and tying the ground up, it's pretty much imperative to be ready and able to irrigate it. Fortunately, this piece of land had kind of both things going for it. It's really well-drained gravel, but yet underneath it, there's this huge aquifer of water that was easy to get at. Consequently, now we have a half acre pond that literally has an unbelievable recovery rate. So as you pump water out of it, the water just flows back in almost as fast as you can pump it. I already had a road running right down to the middle of the farm. So we dug a huge trench and buried a four inch water line the whole length of the farm. With that water main I have, there's a hydrant every 60 feet with a valve on it. Then I traveled around the state and found used irrigation pipe. So I have about 10,000 feet of inch and a half aluminum pipe with uh, sprinklers on it. And I proceeded to buy all the same brand so that it's all interchangeable. A lot of the pipe is strung out, you know, in the spring and it stays there till the fall. We have almost enough to do everything without having to move it around. I bought a big pump that pulls the water out of the pond and pressurizes it. I can hook a tractor onto that pump. We can prime it, start up the water and then pretty much anywhere on the farm, we can make it rain when we need it to rain. The pump isn't big enough to actually do it all at one time. So every time you irrigate, you go down to the water line and decide which things are getting irrigated and turn some valves off and turn some valves on. So it's really great transplanting, especially the bare root things like strawberry plants. I can work all day transplanting and then we can, an hour or two before dark, we can set up a bunch of pipe and turn the pump on and we can make it rain when we need it to rain. As anybody that's ever transplanted stuff without that ability, it can be heartbreaking. Spend all this time and money planting something and then it doesn't rain for a week and it sit there and watch the stuff die. Strawberries work really well with overhead. Strawberries, you need frost protection in the early spring when they're in bloom. And overhead is the only thing that works for that. So typically we do overhead on all of our strawberries. When I first started out, I, before I had the big overhead system, we actually did drip irrigation on the strawberries, which is probably preferable during the growing season, especially the harvest season, because the plants don't get wet. When I got to the point where I was doing almost eight acres of strawberries, to string out eight acres of drip tape and then tear it all up every year was just a ton of labor and fairly expensive and generated this huge, awful pile of plastic that's really hard to recycle. The downside to the overhead irrigation with even most of your vegetable crops is the foliage get, is getting wet constantly. Uh, you're getting water to the plants, but you're, you're getting the foliage wet. You're splashing dirt on, the, on your produce, which is going to lead to you know, mildew and mold and fungus problems. Uh, so we do a mix. Some of the, the higher value uh, vegetables that don't tolerate the overhead we typically run drip tape on. The raspberries I do drip irrigation on and because we have such a huge source of water it's really great because I actually use the the highest flow rate drip tape I can get so I can actually put a lot of water on in a very short period of time with drip irrigation on the raspberries which they love. When they're fruiting they they can use a ton of water. They can use as much as four inches of water a week during the fruiting season. So irrigation is really key. All your other expenses are going to be exactly the same. And if you don't have adequate water, your yields are going to be significantly different. So it's going to affect your profitability.